our today's guest, uh, which is Dr. Vinod Kumar. We are so honored to have you here, sir. Uh, Dr. Vinod, he is presently director, promotion directorate at Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center, that is in space, and Department of Space. Before joining in space, he was heading the GEO Dyna Geo Control Dynamics De Design Division and working as Deputy Project Director, Altitude and Orbit Control System at UR Rao Satellite Center, URSC, with ISRO Bangalore. He's also working as Executive Secretary of Astronautical Society of India. He's a Fellow of the Institution of Engineers in India. India and the Institution of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers. He joined USRC in 1997, where he has been involved with the design and development of attitude and orbit control systems of over three dozen satellites in the last nearly 25 years. He has developed crucial technologies for satellites and a critical mirror motion compensation for technique for ISRO's meteorological satellite series. He has also developed autonomy for geosatellites, which has become the backbone of ISRO's fleet of spacecraft, including Mars or Orbiter mission, whose anniversary went away just recently. And he has been awarded ISRO Team Excellence Award in 2006 by His Excellency, former President of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, for in-orbit management of spacecraft operations. Dr. Vinod is an alumnus, uh, alumni of Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. In his doctoral research, he developed autonomous navigation techniques for collected geostationary satellites at a desired longitude using Indian Regional Navigation system, Satellite System, which is known as, which is also known as IRNSS. Before joining the US URSC, he worked with uh, Indian Air Force on fighter aircraft control systems and also held faculty positions at Regional Engineering College. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us, sir. You have huge achievements. It's a big, big honor for us to have you here. Yeah, thank you, Priyal, for a long introduction. I really appreciate you booked this slot uh, maybe four or five months back. So I, I really, I was just wondering, yeah, NSS is really good to, they are having long-term vision. I really appreciate and uh, I am honored to talk to you on this Dasara day. I wish you all a very happy Dasara and Vijay Dasmi. And I'm seeing that this evening where people will be holiday and they're uh, uh, interested in guidance, navigation and control. I really appreciate that. Yeah, this topic is such that uh, is very close to my heart and uh, I will not take much time to uh, discuss other things. Let's go to the topic and uh, how, whether my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, to put the things in proper perspective, I thought uh, the theme of the World Space Week is space and sustainability, as you know, this year. And so uh, really we should uh, connect the uh, role of what guidance, navigation and control can do. So with this, uh, you know, so just a presentation I outlined. Don't worry how many pages, slide and other things are there. They're just for my help. I will follow in this sequence wherein I will just discuss. Basically, I want to tell you what kind of space traffic is there and what GNC can do. Little bit GNC fundamentals, we will uh, see the definitions and then move on what all is there. The further details can be found in the references which I have uh, given. So sustainable goals are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, SDG. They have identified uh, some 17 goals out of 169 target uh, target associated with SDGs. This you all know, you can see on United Nations website also. And they're, they're really affecting the life of the people on Earth. Uh, and that's, that's why we talk of uh, the kind of uh, applications are there and each one of us is using them. So sustainability from space needs that uh, development for our needs, not the greed, that meet the need of the generation without compromising the uh, future generation's need, because otherwise they will curse us. 
So these goals, what they achieve, how they can be achieved. So and they cite economic growth, social inclusion, and environmental protection. So, <clears throat> so these are the tasks which are to be achieved using these goals. So these, these goals are very well defined. Uh, so sustainability from space and sustainability in, in space. That's also an important topic. And uh, uh, we are talking of uh, sustainability in space also while we are uh, uh, going through the GNC. So these are the 17 goals uh, wherein you have that there should be no poverty. Yes, poverty. This has been going on for ages. Uh, like Garibi Hatao, we have heard since our childhood. So yes, zero hunger. We, there should be good health and well-being, quality education, very important. So these are the goals in which uh, space helps. So they are the application each nation around the world wants to have space applications, wants to get benefited from space applications. So there is a big rush. So that's why this talk of sustainability in space is coming. So these are the certain 17 goals you can see at uh, website. So I will not waste much time here continuing with uh, my presentation. So what to implement them, what all is needed is the, it is the basically decided by Global actions should be there, means provide more resources, provide smart solutions for sustainable development goals. Local actions are needed, means each country should devise the policies, they should give the budget for it, and there should be regulatory framework. So these are the certain guidelines to achieve this. And the most of the thing comes, the people action, like NSS society is there, astronomical Uh, there are many societies and in space is there to handhold them, guide them. So, the, so uh, to implement government policy in a more effective manner. So, continuing with this, uh, some basics we'll discuss. You know, orbital dynamics. It depends on Kepler's three law, where you can determine the orbit of a satellite, uh, artificial Earth satellite. I will say. And uh, even you can decide, uh, determine the position of the planets and this, we'll see that. So we have seen that mass cause, causes space time to bend and objects accelerate toward the mass. This acceleration is known as gravity. You can see here a big body and there are the band in the, so you see when there is a band, the space time is bent there, this velocity will increase towards this valley, toward when it passes. So this is also scientists are used to do the manuals. We have seen that we have Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 launched 45 years back. Uh, they are going in opposite directions for this uh, <clears throat> to find the existence of uh, any human uh, being in the universe. Now they have left universe, they are in the longest uh, uh, body, man made body that has reached. So what are the functions rocket performs? They lift a payload, they put it in the orbit. Required velocity, that's the important, to put them in a orbit, like in a low Earth orbit, around 400 kilometers, you can get 7.6 kilometers per second. To reach geo, you need around, there should be 10.5 or so kilometers per second at that height. You will know them uh, 250 to 2000 You can learn them from the books I have given in the references. They're the medium earth orbits. Uh, it should be, I think, uh, 10,000 to 20,000 kilometer kind of thing. Highly elliptical orbit, like Russia and other country wants to put their satellites. So they have an orbit with the 63 degree inclination they use and they put their uh, satellite in that orbit. That's why if you see that GLONASS orbit will be having such kind of uh, uh, orbital parameters. Then the most popular geostationary Earth orbit where we're using three satellite, you can cover full globe. This kind of orbit and that impact of... Uh, now we come to the important part where uh, what are the 
electromagnetic spectrum and how they can be affected by the space weather. Because that's important when we are launching many satellites and what happens to the our application. You must have seen in your uh, house when there is a rain, uh, uh, then there is a disruption in the signal, you get disturbed. So these are the various frequencies. You can see the uh, TV, uh, TV frequency, and you see that they are increasing uh, with high frequency. When you go towards uh, satellite, heat lamps, day and night, uh, daylight, all these frequencies, they matter. They have a role to play in our life. Uh, you see around 600 terahertz, 3 pHz, etc. up to up to 10 p.m. That kind of wavelengths exist in uh, space and they are being used for to benefit the mankind on Earth as well as when you go in outer space. So you see here, uh, this slide shows the atmospheric effects on the electromagnetic spectrum. So you see that when um, there is a kind of disruption in the signal, whether it is atmospheric dis disruption or there is a kind of jamming, uh, is done by something so it can disturb your application so there are the ways to protect it we have to take the protective actions so space weather matters a lot it disturbs your communication but we need to in spite of all these things we need to survive in space so that is the beauty of the system where you have to develop the many technologies and uh, you have to overcome all these hazards. The major hazards which I see is because of application and each nation wants their satellite. And you see this is the uh, chart from NASA which say that uh, how the space traffic or junkyard is progressing over the year. And there is a prediction for up to 2030 what it can see in the last. You can see yourself. This is uh, and there will be more. Uh, so I have written one term here that is Kessler syndrome. What it is means uh, uh, when the space junk is very high, so there is a possibility of random collision that will happen. And when a random collision ha happens, I'll show you one um, uh, video where it says that how many debris will come. And it has happened in space in past. Uh, in the in collision where iridium and one Russian satellite collided. So you see uh, what kind of uh, uh, <laughs> space environment it is if you see about 10 centimeter where we are heading to us. So if you see in this condition, the guidance, navigation and control provide a real, real great uh, value and it needs to be perfect and highly accurate. So I will play this video to show you that what happens in case uh, uh, there is a collision in space. So you see here. So there is an international space station. There is a plan to put orbital reef there. See iridium and this, could I see how, how many, there was a junkyard, how many satellite will get affected with such kind of axles. If we, and you see the full orbit is, and they take years to come down. Really, it depends upon their, uh, now uh, their surface will be less, solar uh, pressure, aerodynamic drag, they will be slowly bringing them down, but it takes its own time. So, so what we need to do is we should have some way to go there to guide our crafts and uh, to control them and to save them, to do the maneuvers, not only from... Uh, uh, known targets and objects, but there will be some unknown objects and targets. So you have to drive in a space. And I see the cities are saturated. You see their cities are saturated. And I'm seeing in future, uh, and you can also see that like this, if space is saturated, what's going to happen? Other uh, guidance navigation control requirement is the missile detection from the space and uh, and uh, direction and using the information So using IR detection, you can do this, detect a missile and uh, send an uh, anti-missile to, so, to avoid the falling of missile on our territory. So these are the kind of technologies where you need the precision guidance, navigation and technology. So really, 
the subject is very close to my heart that missile detection from space and uh, in fact i was working on this let us see when i can restart this other thing is the satellite jamming uh, you can if somebody is playing mischief, you should have technologies to jam or to avoid the jamming. So they use different kind of technologies. By uplink jamming, they will do download jamming. They will do VC. We have been seeing uh, last couple of years that there is an increase in such kind of activities. You know that which other countries can do such mischiefs because. Uh, uh, now coming to the major tit uh, title of the talk is. Uh, guidance, navigation, and control. So how we do, what is guidance basically? If you do the plane, uh, plane talking, what happened in background? There's a determination of a nominal flight path associated with control histories. Means in the background, when we launch a satellite, uh, there, there's a flight path is being worked out. How it is worked, say Sri Hargota, you have to launch. So there are the constraints. The constraints are from the earth side. It should not pass over the uh, populous areas. It should pass through sea. It, not, it should not go to other countries. It should not go to their territories. Then there is a requirement of a satellite that, okay, after launch, we should have power immediately after launch. And so it comes the uh, visibility of the sun. So sun should be visible at which point you want to drop the satellite or launch the separate the satellite. So these are the some specific object objectives uh, which flight path planning is done. Now there's a strategy. So after this is a latitude, longitude, and altitude is decided and flight path is put. Eh? Now how you follow that nominal pass in path in the presence of disturbances because they are the uh, disturbances from environment, uh, they are the uncertainties, navigational uncertainties. In, in the presence of those, we have to guide that. Now navigation, you all know, for estimating the present position and give the specified output means now then comes when you are having present position, Guidance is there, present position is there. Now you have to control to the guidance. So these are the kind of things, techniques uh, which are required. Now coming to the navigation part where you estimate your position and guide to your uh, uh, end point rather destination. So we use the navigation in a big way. So today we'll uh, tell, yeah, this I was telling that when you launch a satellite you have to you need to guide it to that place and uh, you have to circular, circularize the orbit navigation i have uh, described that uh, mm, you need uh, to go to your workplace you go to your relatives friend or relatives place and friend place but how you do what you do that we will discuss today once you do a navigation means you have the error signal because you have a truth and then you have present position, you can compute the error and give to the control system. This I'll uh, cover in the later stage. So these are the some application I did not say agriculture, uh, aviation, environment, marine. See where and all navigation applications are there in space, surveying, mapping. It's really a great deal. So once you have all these applications, certainly there will be a uh, point in your mind. Uh, what is space navigation? What we do from uh, when we do? So here I will try to explain it in a very plain wording. Uh, you can interrupt me if you feel any difficulty. So we are moving towards, let us say, you went somewhere for an mm, evening or like a weekend trip uh, to somewhere 300, 400 kilometers from uh, Bangalore and you have forgotten where you are. So now you ask someone uh, where you are. He says you are 300 plus kilometers from Bangalore. But you can be anywhere in this circle of 300, whatever number he has told. This is a hard fact. Uh, you don't know, but you can't fix your position. You can be anywhere, north, south, east, west, or in between. But then you ask someone. He says that, uh, oh, no, you are some 469, 470 kilometers from Trivandrum. So what happened? You got the two point, but still you are not sure. You can be anywhere with these two things. Now you need a third person to tell you 
that he said, hey, you are from 150 kilometer from Valenkani. So now you are sure that, yes, your coordinates are fixed in the, uh, in the frame where you are. Then you can determine, yes, I am as Trichurapalli. So this is the kind of uh, general thing which has been moved to space. So, so we will now, in the next charts on Y, we will go to 3D trial iteration. That was 2D trial iteration. In 2D, you play with circuits, but when it comes to 3D, you have to play, you have to expand your horizon in three dimensional. That is a spare wheel work. Let us say you have uh, one satellite in 100 kilometer. I will explain with this. Uh, so you have this. So this is where uh, the satellite will cover some area. Uh, like a spare and uh, let's say 100 kilometer. Other is the satellite B. It tells you that uh, the signals will be like this and you have a third satellite where you fix your position. Now what happens that when you have, I should go back, when you have three satellites, so you found two cards, uh, common cards for cards, so your position can be anywhere in these two cards. What happens, then you need a fourth satellite to tell you where exactly you are. So you will determine the P is the point and other Q will uh, fall out of this, out of the earth. So we say that P. So this is the simple way which we try to connect with the, the space when we have lost the satellite. So you declare this is our uh, position. So for determining the position on ground or of a, so at least four satellites should be there. And we should the distance between us and each of the satellite. That user has a receiver. It is uh, getting very low power radio signal from the navigation satellites. It has to be four or better than this. So how it is determined? Uh, see, it's a very simple principle. When we went to the ninth standard, I think in the physics, we were given a formula velocity equal to distance by time. So you're, you have to find your distance from one place. Uh, so what you do, distance is equal to propagation rate into time. What is the propagation rate is the speed of the light because your electromagnetic waves travels at the speed of light. And time taken by the signal from the satellite to your receiver is this time. So you can compute the distance. So this is the simple way. Now how it is done? So each navigation satellite sends a pseudo random number code. And same code is generated by the satellite, uh, by your receiver. So time difference, which you receive, uh, this is the same code which is running your receiver and sent by satellite when it is received at your receiver, they see how much time difference has happened. This time difference will tell the uh, distance. Hmm? This is called the signal propagation time. So. This is the carrier, then from the satellite, this PRN code is put on this, modulated carrier is going, then receiver receives it at particular time stands. The reception time uh, delay is that's that this much time from the satellite to here you have come. So these parameters will be used in a very simple uh, equation where you know the satellite of the all satellites, uh, the position of the all the satellites, and you know the signal transmitted. Time, that's why time stamping is very important. I'll cover some, some, some of the slides, right? Is it going okay? I am fast or slow? Fine, sir. It's okay, yeah. So this delta time the, uh, will be helpful to solve this uh, equation, uh, simple equation. We have four unknown x, y, z and time, and, and then you can get uh, your uh, position fixed on the ground. Now the important role which time plays. You know that uh, how to solve this problem. Now um, the, we should have a precise time either in the receiver or in the satellite or both. Right. So can you can anyone buy an atomic clock which is the most uh, uh, accurate standard in the world. So what we do we put those atomic clock in our, at the ground stations and as well as in the satellite to calibrate them properly. 
so because they are very heavy and costly so whereas simple quartz clock is put in the receiver now here are the example for various standards uh, available for timing standard like hydrogen 10 by minus 15 second per day you see the inaccuracy and rubidium cesium standard we have flown cesium standard in some of this light hydrogen we have been i think trying now so you see if there is a 10 nanosecond error in a day how much error it will be three meter error it will be on the ground so you consider it is nanosecond if it is 100, it goes to 30 meter. So there are the various other parameters which leads to inaccuracy. So here in this, why we need highly uh, accurate time. So in this slide, it says that if your position is accurate, ideal, you will be here. But 8 nanosecond, if it is wrong, so you can be anywhere in this circle. Anyway, uh, we want to say that need for uh, highly accurate timing is, standard, is the requirement for the accurate navigation. That's why people claim that uh, uh, we are not accurate. That's why they will give some, you can be accurate to some number. Now you see here left side, there are many uh, other sources of errors. Pseudo ranging error, satellite clock I have told, ephemeris error. You know ephemeris is the orbit determination error of the satellites. There may be some error, because you carry out ranging for that. Atmospheric delays, I know, tropo, uh, receiver computation noise. Uh, see, there are the many, and uh, there are the other things which comes uh, where you are there. They are called reflected signal, direct signal. Uh, then you receive the reflected signal at the antenna. That also uh, plays a spoil spoil. But there are the mitigation techniques uh, uh, which are there. Even though you uh, you started with a very simple equation uh, to solve, but these uh, when you add all this, uh, the complexity increases. However, you can plan to ignore them to study the effect of all this. These are the some uh, equivalent range errors for various types of things, how much it can disturb your uh, precise position. Another very important parameter is how your satellite and your receiver is placed. So I will explain it again with a 2D example. So let's say somebody's position is Lucknow and he wants uh, his exact location. You see, when they are there, he is in this wide shaded area. So they are roughly uh, perpendicular uh, from Lucknow. But however, if you take other two cities, so you see here, he can be inaccurate to this parameter. So that's why when we decide the constellation of the satellites, uh, we keep this point also in the mind that how we should place and ensure that your dilution of precision is not deviated. Yeah, it should be low. So uh, this is another very important parameter that is required to place a satellite. So low DOP indicates that it is very good. And higher the DOP means uh, your your position error is uh, bad. So now these are the standard you all know the GPS constellation. Then there is a GLONASS uh, constellation. They are the oldest thing. And now Galileo constellation by European Union. And uh, there are the, some augmentation system. This is also important. Uh, I will say that uh, augmentation system wide area. Augmentation system, the other four are American, then Japanese, uh, empty set augmentation system, IGNOS overlay system. The other very interesting is the Gagan. Then why you need this augmented system? So the requirement of augmentation system comes from the need for error correction. We call it ICE. ICE error means ionosphere. They are the ICE, ephemeris is their one, and clock. Uh, ionosphere, clock, and ephemeris correction error. And these are ionosphere errors so that they change uh, uh, with the time of the day also. It can be more during night time, during rainy season, and there are wet delays, there are the uh, tropospheric delays. All these things are local in nature. So for that, you need to have a Precise. Now, Gagan full form means GPS aided geo -augment augmentation system. So, this what it does, it takes the uh, errors from the ground stations uh, all over India, 
then it gives those correction signal through geo satellite to all the receivers. So Gagan system is uh, augmentation system developed for India. Why it is required? Because for the safety of life operation, uh, when you need uh, you use GPS receiver uh, while landing. Uh, for the aeroplane where uh, you need the high precision because life is involved there. We can't use directly our Navic system or GPS system. So for that, we need a definite uh, uh, system which corrects all these errors. So that is the purpose. Uh, we go for augmentation systems to get the precise uh, positioning information. These are the some regional systems with the Navic and other things. Now coming to our best constellation that is Navic Subterracy constellation, uh, the one of the very hot top topic is first of its kind at geo slot. All were using medium earth uh, orbit or inclined orbits and we did it with a very short time at a geo of 35786 kilometer and uh, it has also given a very good accuracy and uh, it has got its certification as well. So this constellation, uh, Subtracy constellation, how they move uh, is uh, given in this chart. So, so you can just have a glimpse to provide the position it will be. Now we are uh, going to increase this number and making it true, truly global. So now you see, uh, you have some feeling of uh, satellite based navigation system. You can read about them further. But how this full setup, full this gamut, how it works? There's a space segment where satellites are kept. There's a control segment and there's a user segment. User segments are with us, the receiver. Control segment controls the each satellite, updates its ephemeris. The space segment is the work for the installation of the space assets and, uh, and ensuring their position done by the control segment. And they broadcast uh, uh, various parameters. They are the reference station. They are reference transmitters to provide the corrections, right? So that to increase, see how much uh, work goes on at the background when you do any system. So now see how control segment works. There is a like a master control facility, stack. So what they do, they observe the position of uh, FFRs and clock biases. They apply the correction, they uplink on board so that uh, users are receiving their uh, uh, position, precise position. So this work goes on on daily basis uh, for uh, ensuring that you get the proper uh, location accuracy, right? These are the some ground station by NASA all over the world. We are there and uh, now coming to our NAVIC, uh, the great uh, navigation system, which has, uh, we have a IRNSS navigation center. We have satellite control facilities. We have CDMA ranging station six, IRIMS range and integrity monitoring stations. So they are spread all over India. You see that how much infrastructure has gone to give you uh, give you a navigation system. And now this uh, is operational. And actually now you will uh, wonder uh, what are the parameters it gives? What all we use? See, uh, Navic, there is a Navic uh, a starting time epoch. This was done on August 22, 1999, Sunday midnight between 21 and 22nd August. As the start of epoch, uh, Navic system time was ahead of UTC by 13 leap seconds. This can be some weird quiz questions also. The Navic gives to general and restricted service uh, where we use both the frequencies L5 and S band. The world uh, uh, was not believing that S band can work, but we have proven that yes, S band can S band can also work. So pre precise position is used by the government for the different uh, applications. So you can operate in uh, because uh, when you have two frequencies, uh, your uh, 
Mm, position will be a decimeter kind of inaccuracy. Now, what all gives? Uh, any uh, navigation satellite gives you two types of data. We call it navigation data, and other is the observation data. So, navigation data includes the time stamping, orbital uh, parameters, general system health and almanac of all other satellites. It gives its own precise position and general health of all other neighboring satellites. So, uh, from this, uh, we can obtain the position and velocity with respect to Earth. And observation data we call measurement also. Uh, this has three parameters that is pseudo range, carrier phase, and Doppler. So these are the kind of parameters when we come and uh, then we use these parameters as the real time kinematic orbit determination. I have hidden the equations uh, because people should not uh, get bored, but they are all given in my publication as well as in the books on navigation. You can see. So I want to see how I want to tell you that when you determine this, you can determine kinematically as well as the dynamic position. So coming to the next part, that is control system, how do we use them? So to use them, uh, you can see the right side, uh, if my arrow is visible, the GNSS Navic receiver is there. It gives the input and we fuse it in the center, sensor suite. Translation motion dynamics. It, you consider this is a satellite, a big circle. Now it, this is uh, fused into it. It uh, on the it is mounted on the uh, this inside of uh, brain of the satellite. We call orbit orbit attitude and orbit control system. Then we blend these uh, measurements in kind of Kalman filter. You can do in extended Kalman filter and all. Then you have the guidance command. Then from this, you determine your control law and you drive wheel or thrusters. You know, translation motion control, you need the push. That is, there should be some expansion, expansion of uh, mass. Uh, and for attitude control, wheels are sufficient. Then we apply all the perturbations uh, in the simulation and get the, uh, get the required <coughs> torque to drive or thrust to drive the satellite. So this is the control system in work. Then when we did, then we have taken two satellites just for and low Earth orbit with those ephemeris and orbital parameters as given in these two. And this saw that there is an inter-satellite link also uh, to communicate between them because this is also important when you uh, when you want to control the relative position of they should tell each other that hey i am here these are my parameters and these are the some measurement model uh, we do high fidelity model and we uh, include all the errors and noise parameters in this uh, then what we do we using all this uh, we can find the position that's the one way then we do the high fidelity translation motion dynamics to increase the because kinematics are uh, not that accurate so we take help of mathematical models uh, basic uh, newton's law of motion which you have studied maybe in 10th 12th standard and then we applied uh, the various disturbances you see that you must have uh, seen that uh, gravitational equation where the r double dot equal to minus mu by r QR. So, and uh, apply all the pattern wages search on this. Considering it's a two body problem, we ap apply from Earth J2, J22, the acceleration from sun, moon, drag, solar radiation, pressure, and thrust. All the parameters are infused into this, and we solve to find the position. And then in a EKF, extended Kalman filter, you can use the parameters from the uh, receiver uh, to improve the position so and one interesting part when acceleration of sun and moon there when we use the equations so we are able to find their uh, uh, position of the sun and moon and it was very interesting to uh, really we were, we were excited when we got these results and when we were seeing you see right side top moon parameters moon earth distance you see 3.6 lakh 60 thousand to 4 lakh something it goes and when we were matching this result with this it was really a very 
wow moment for us when we did it first time. The longitude, how it changes, the latitude of the moon. Likewise, sun parameters, declination. You can see exactly when we started on 13th April there. So you see what was the declination of the sun. And it goes to 23.5, the top, the bottom plot left side. So this goes to then it comes back in December minus 23.5, it goes. So you see how beautiful models are working. They see 1.5 billion. I think a kilometer is the sun earth distance. So, so all these parameters, when you play with these models, you really feel excited when you get such kind of results. And finally, when we fuse into this and we can find the light long and uh, altitude of a satellite, uh, all these two bigger things are uh, our uh, LEO satellites where we have fused. And these all, uh, Top three static dots and uh, figure eight are our um, navigation satellites. So these are the kind of errors you see that uh, uh, it comes to when measurements are available. You see it is some meter level. When measurements are not ava available, so it is going up to 10 meter and all uh, this kind of thing. So I, I need to say there is a great value in using these mathematical models, navigation things. Right. Now, another thing is here, uh, this I've explained, but this is uh, uh, in different context. That's why for translation motion control. Likewise, it is for uh, rotational motion. All six degree of freedom control can be accomplished using these parameters uh, in this. And you see, this was the animation which we generated for this uh, our simulation at LEO. I don't know, it's not playing. They move very nicely. Uh, and you can see how close approach we avoid uh, using our uh, this thing. So these are the certain things which we do using control. You can control those satellites. Uh, you can control their relative distance and uh, and you can maintain within uh, them uh, them within a your desired circle. You see the eccentricity we have control to be a within a circle. Where red circle is our limit. When it will crosses, it will give it uh, thruster, and you need not to be worried about it. This is done autonomously. You see, after 30, 32 days, there were three pulses to bring it back because it went and tried to violate the uh, specified limits. Like by inclination control, when your inclination going above your threshold of 0.1 degree, it does it automatically and it sends it back. Hey, you are violating the uh, specified limits. So these are the certain things and uh, the fruit is in front of you for the prediction of the weather, maintaining the relative positions, right? Now, another important concept which I would like to say is data retrieval satellite system. Uh, they are like TDRSS, you must have heard. Uh, so, in fact, uh, LEO satellites are not visible continuously. They lose the ground. So, how to get the data? So, data relay satellites are uh, used for that. So, there are three satellites covering for the full globe. They are mounted at strategic locations and then they transfer to the satellite. The satellite gives to another satellite, then it comes to the ground. So these are the kind of uh, certain te techniques where you can have satellite to satellite, satellite to the ground platform, satellite to any drone, satellite to this thing and, uh, uh, and use it for your purpose. Now GPS is also used for attitude estimation. This is the another very important uh, uh, application of GPS where you mount uh, four antennas on a satellite and from GPS or Navic you can use and there are the mathematical formulations uh, you can estimate attitude as well in addition to the position. So that's all what we discussed is here. Uh, and these are the some references where you can see some of the general papers uh, for your reference. And this is the very good mountain brook. Wanted Brico and Gills should be with each student and he has done a really great work in all these uh, areas. We have also an uh, important slide see what is happening presently. We are hooked to mobiles and machines are learning. So be careful. They will take control of all our assets if this trend continues. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.
I am available if there is a, some question, comments. I rest it, but uh, within time. Yeah. yeah, there are a couple of questions I see here. You can take them, please. What? What courses? Skills, yeah. Uh, okay, fine. So basically, when you go for navigation courses, they're the very good on uh, navigation fund fundamentals. Uh, there's a course. There's a book by Misra and Enge. M-I-S-R-A. They are available in my days. If you read that book, and especially uh, if you read four, five, six chapters, you are the expert. If you read full uh, book, it's a very nice book. So if you uh, are you have a, some mathematic knowledge, some physics knowledge that is sufficient. And this is, I think, being covered in 11th and 12th uh, standard uh, well. And even uh, uh, which the course Space Technology Minor, which we have suggested to IITs and which is going to be implemented mostly in all the engineering colleges in the upcoming years. We have that. Uh, we have put up uh, this navigation fundamentals in that. So certainly it is, um, it is uh, possible uh, for a basic knowledge of mathematics and physics. It's not that tough, right? So 12th standard who's doing engineering can Aram say take it. Uh, and you should have some mathematical skills and that's all. <laughs> what is this? Sorry. Uh, hello, I'm audible. Yeah, you are loud and clear. Yeah. Uh, I'm a first, 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 कि अगर समझो सोलर तूफान आता है और उस वजह से जितने भी सैटेलाइट है नेविगेशन सिस्टम है ये सब कुछ क्या बोलते खत्म हो जाते हैं तो बैकअप के तौर पर ऐसा कुछ सिस्टम है कि अपने भारत देश के पास पूरी दुनिया के तो नहीं बोलना अपने भारत देश के पास जिसकी वजह से एटीएम वगैरह हो गया ये टीवी का हो गया या फिर दूसरे ये जैसे कम्युनिकेशन का ये सब कुछ चलता है बैकअप के तौर पर सैटेलाइट सभी खत्म होने के बावजूद भी solar model yes solar storms comes and they disturb the signal quite well uh, you are very right uh, but kya hota uska backup system is always there we have optical fiber network all over uh, india and all over world so this will continue, no worry from that point. And such big things never happens uh, because we have alternate uh, systems also. Yeah, that's a uh, good question. And uh, yeah, certain disturbance happens now also when sun comes uh, uh, directly opposite satellite uh, and your uh, networks are down temporarily. So yes, you're very right, it happens. But for uh, those applications, uh, uh, to continuity of the service, ground network is always late. That's why optical fiber is the another, and ground network is also that will put in the action. 
आ, मेरा और एक क्वेश्चन है लेकिन मेरे ख्याल से समय का प्रॉब्लम हो सकता है इस वजह से क्या आप अपने निंडिंग आईडी और ईमेल आईडी मुझे शेयर कर सकते हैं अगर पॉसिबल हो तो मैं वो जितने भी मेरे मन में जो सवाल है ना और गाइडेंस चाहिए ना मैं आपको ईमेल कर दूंगा हिंदी में अगर आपकी परमिशन हो तो या वो आप इन पे न आप डायरेक्टर हाइफन पी डी पे मेल कर सकते हो कोई भी सवाल उस पर दे रखा है यू कॉन्टेक्ट सर्टेनली आंसर इट थैंक यू हिंदी में करूंगा तो चलेगा हिंदी में करूंगा तो चलेगा इंग्लिश में नो प्रॉब्लम हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश बोथ आर ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू या See, yeah, basically what happens, uh, you have to, uh, there should be signal, right? Uh, so to get the signal, now presently the requirement is towards earth. Uh, you can put outward. So it will be spread to the out, outside world. Now, again, we have to do that study. Uh, you have to find your trajectory. You have to fine tune your trajectories to in such a way that you direct your signal. There is a plan to develop the navigation system for moon. I have done some study on that, how navigation system for the moon can be developed. And from the ground to moon, you can have the connectivity. So it's a very low signal, low power signal. In fact, it goes to the far distance. So if you increase the power of the signal, it will farther it will go. So there's the plan to develop the navigation system to Mars to moon already if you uh, google it uh, isa is working on uh, moonlight initiatives you see that moonlight initiatives if you type in that you will get yes efforts are on now it can be extended well but you have to uh, put the direction of antennas uh, towards uh, outer space sure yes please Somebody has written just now one question, I think. He was writing something. I, it was it was flipping uh, on the screen, I don't know. It goes to last or yeah. Yeah, it's a very nice question. In future, uh, is it any future program to move? Yeah space pollution which is happening a very good question yeah of course i see humanity is such that when survival at a stake they will work on this so space situational awareness and space traffic management are the two uh, initiatives which are being taken world over so we are also working in this direction where uh, space debris can be removed you can see uh, behind your screen uh, Prathmes and uh, Priyal, there are a lot of debris I can see. There's a belt, a lot of satellite. Uh, so there's a plan to take net, capture them, and throw them away, burn them in space. So, so like this, the offers are there. So this is guidance navigation and control is not only for that, but space debris removal, identifying the objects. Even recently, one... Uh, Asteroid was coming towards Earth, I think, uh, lakhs of kilometers away, which NASA has hit a satellite and uh, changed its trajectory. So, so such things, there's a round-the-clock observation of outer space is being done world over. Especially NASA has a lot of uh, station, optical station. They keep viewing, they keep monitoring what is happening. Some asteroid can come and hit Earth. See, dinosaur went because of that. So, such kind of things are happening and the uh, world is uh, awake and we from Astronautical Society of India, ISRO in space, we are organizing a workshop in uh, January 11 to 13 in Bangalore. So, you people should participate in that. Uh, we are releasing the flyers soon. Good. Very nice. So the next question is, how can take back the space pollutants matter on Earth's surface? Yeah, 
So see, it will burn when it comes. Uh, only thing it it keeps rotating about that because uh, uh, because there is no expulsion of energy from that. See what happens when a satellite rotates or any object rotates about Earth. It has some velocity. Only thing is uh, solar radiation pressure or aerodynamic drag. Aerodynamic drag is up to 160-170 km. Uh, after that, its effect is very minimal. So when it is rotating, the one side it comes and will push it back. Other side it comes, it is gives it acceleration. So what happens? Keep rotating and its trajectory slowly keeps uh, uh, coming. Means apogee, perigee. Peri peri so perigee comes to near Earth and then it enters the atmosphere and it burns basically. So rather than bringing it is good, you bring them, deorbit them, and so that they burn. In the so God has given some kind of protection also. One more question is there. Yeah, what parameters will change if you were to put a navigation system for moon or any other planets? Yeah, very good. So basically, what happened? Uh, you can put a navigation system, but I have told you one important equation your gravitational equation which you must have uh, read in 12th standard or 11th standard r double dot is equal to minus mu by r q r that is your master then all other perturbations so if you take care of them uh, it's gravity that plays the role uh, uh, in anything that's why i indicated there is a gravity and uh, it changes many things the solar radiation pressure will change. That is long equation where we see all the perturbation. Uh, rather than taking perturbation from the Earth, you take from the sun perturbation parameters. You have to take gravity model of that. Now with the distance, how solar radiation pressure will affect that. All these uh, parameters uh, will change. Now Earth rotates a particular way. Some inclination is there. Likewise, Mars has all these parameters. So those capillarian elements are well available. The G is also available. You can use those and start doing the thing. Uh, implementing for Moon, Mars, any other planet of your interest. So please uh, see those references. Uh, you will find very good references in that, in fact. Uh, okay. Shinmai. You see, generally what I did, I used the MATLAB. Uh, because it's interesting to code the equation and uh, uh, because you understand what is happening uh, with your program, you have full control. However, your satellite uh, toolkit STK is a very nice platform which give directly, you don't have to you select the body, you select it will give you the plot. Uh, these kind of things are available. Now, Chinmay is asking, are there any Indian startup currently working on GNC simulation model? What is the value importance of such startups? Yeah, it's a very good question. Yeah, a couple of startups are there. I think Digantra works a very big way in uh, this thing, space situational awareness and uh, relative position and all. Uh, this is there and uh, there are many more companies which are coming up. One more question, sir, so on that. Uh, why the side effect on living things due to huge amount of, yeah, yes. Uh, but, uh, okay, it has some effects, but I am, uh, uh, it is, uh, see, is again, it's limited like mobile, right? Uh, mobile, when you are having uh, a mobile, if you continuously put, they say there's a heat, yes. Little bit affected, but they're within permissible limits, and uh, that's why, need not worry uh, too much because earlier we used to say that tv signal also affects and all those things so it is same thing it is the same signal but various bands and frequencies how to assess these slides yeah we can share these slides with your noise online okay somebody has raised the hand what the side of that I think I have answered it. It's coming again. Huh? If hmm? somebody has raised the hand, or by mistake it is. Okay. 
आई एम ऑडिबल मैं मेरे तीन सवाल है पहला सवाल ये है कि अगर अंतरिक्ष के अंदर हम लोग जाते हैं और स्पेस मैं समझो धरती से मंगल ग्रह पर जा रहे हैं और बीच रास्ते में कुछ कंप्यूटर सिस्टम वगैरह ऐसा कुछ ऐसा कुछ क्या बोलते खराब हो जाए तो मंगल ग्रह पे किस तरह से जाएंगे मतलब कि नेविगेशन किस तरह से करेंगे कंप्यूटर पूरे बंद हो चुके जैसे अपोलो मिशन में हुए थे तो तब कैसे yes. करेंगे वो हो सके दूसरा सवाल ये है कि अगर सेटेलाइट डिजाइन करना हो तो वो किस तरह सेटेलाइट डिजाइन करने के लिए कोई सॉफ्टवेयर वगैरह है क्या जैसे एक पर्सन ने पूछा था काफी सारे स्पेस सेक्टर में स्टार्टअप अभी बंद है तो उसके लिए क्वेश्चन कर रहा था पहला क्वेश्चन मैं आपका समझ पाया था पहले मैं पहला क्वेश्चन कर लेता हूँ दूसरे में कुछ इंटरप्शन था तो आपका क्वेश्चन है अगर नेवसी क्या होता है समथिंग कॉल्ड सेफ्टी ऑफ लाइक ह्यूमन सेफ्टी ह्यूमन सेफ्टी रेटिंग सो व्हाट वी डू एट द ग्राउंड वाइल वी आर डिजाइनिंग एज ए लॉन्च व्हीकल और ए स्पेस व्हीकल वी कैरी आउट सम स्टडी एंड Double and triple redundancies are provided. One system fails immediately; second will take over. So these kind of technologies are already there. And what was your second question? My question was that some software, like something, can simulate to do with which we can take over the cube set satellites or the bigger satellites. That is, those inside the component that we can design and make everything from scratch, like rocket building, like open rocket software. से सेटेलाइट करने के लिए बनाने के लिए डिजाइन करने के लिए कोई सॉफ्टवेयर है क्या में अवेलेबल ओपन ही जितने है है या जैसे सेटेलाइट टूल किट वो और पैकेजेस फॉर कम्युनिकेशन ऑल्सो आई थिंक यू ड्रॉप दिस क्वेश्चन एग्जैक्ट uh vendor here it is there so you search on the satellite toolkit you search on that uh, uh mathworks mathwork also provide solution including hardware knowledge theek hai nahi 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 main cad game main, software also yeah main main na main सॉफ्टलाइन के अंदर हार्डवेयर का मैंने बोला था ऑनलाइन पीसी के मदद से डिजाइन करने का फ्री में ऐसे टेस्ट करके हम लोग अपनी नॉलेज बढ़ा सके उसके बाद ऑफलाइन में खरीद के वो टूल किट वगैरह होते हैं वो कर सकते हैं लेकिन नॉलेजिंग फ्री बट वेन यू गो फॉर या दे आर देर बट दे कंडक्ट सम वर्कशॉप दे कंडक्ट सम training programs uh, so depending upon that uh, what you doing by the way आ, मैं तो अभी मैं तो फिलहाल अभी स्टार्टअप स्टार्ट करने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ जिसकी मदद से जितने भी ये स्टार्टअप इंडस्ट्री के अंदर या स्पेस स्पेस के अंदर या एजुकेशन में होते हैं उनको मैं बैकबोन के तौर पर मैं सपोर्ट कर सकूँ और ये सभी ना जानकारी है ना मैं उन तक पहुँचा सकूँ तो ये करने okay. की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ ठीक है आप एक दो दिस थिंग करके आप यू कैन राइट टू अस वील कनेक्ट या नेक्स्ट एनी वन एल्स वील क्लोज इट नाउ थैंक यू थैंक यू बाय गुड डे थैंक यू बाय Thank you bye bye, bye.